Russia deployed a new battalion of advanced S-400 surface-to-air missile systems in Crimea. Its fourth such battalion, commander of the Russia 4th Air Force and Air Defense Army explained that the deployed missiles were capable of securing airspace regardless of the target's altitude and speed. He said the missile system could hit the targets up to 30 kilometers high with speeds up to 2,700 kilometers per hour. The move is likely to escalate tensions with Ukraine and Kiev, saying that further militarization of the annexed peninsula puts the entire Black Sea in danger. The Kremlin denied a Ukrainian allegation that Russia was restricting shipping near Crimea as part of what Kiev said was a de facto blockade of its ports on the Sea of Azov. Ukraine's infrastructure minister had earlier accused Russia of barring ships from leaving and entering the sea. Days after Moscow seized three Ukrainian naval vessels and the crews. Denying charges, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said he was aware of such problems and said shipping traffic was moving normally through the Russian-controlled Kerch Strait, which separates the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov. German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas said that uh, Germany was prepared to continue providing to, to the Donbass region of Ukraine, which she said needed a lasting ceasefire. He said the people in Donbass also needed aid, medicines, food and clean drinking water and that Germany was prepared to continue to lead and lend support. Early on Thursday, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko accused Russia's Vladimir Putin of wanting to annex his entire country and call for NATO to deploy warships to a sea shared by the two nations. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko said Ukraine was on the cusp of achieving its goal of setting up an independent church, thereby snapping centuries-old ties to the Russian clergy, whom Kiev accuses of meddling in its affairs. Ukraine's push to create an independent church has incensed Moscow at a time of escalating crisis between the two neighbors following a clash in Black Sea waters. Relations between the two remains bitter following Russia's seizure of Crimea in 2014 and the outbreak of a Kremlin-backed insurgency in eastern Ukraine that has killed more than 10,000 people. The U.S. displayed pieces of what it said were Iranian weapons deployed to militants in Yemen and Afghanistan. The move seemed a desperate attempt by President Donald Trump's administration to pressure Tehran to curb its regional activities. The second presentation of Iranian weapons by the Pentagon coincides with growing concern in Congress over U.S. military support for the Saudi-led coalition in Yemen's civil war. U.S. Special Representative for Iran, Brian Hook warned, saying that Iranian threat is growing and that there was an accumulation of risk of escalation. U.S. President Donald Trump's longtime personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, pleaded guilty to making false statements to Congress regarding a Trump Organization real estate project in Moscow. Cohen entered the guilty plea in federal court in Manhattan, admitting he made false statements to Congress in an investigation by lawmakers into whether Trump's campaign worked with Russia to sway the election. U.S. President Donald Trump said he was open to a trade deal with China but was not sure he wanted one as he headed to Argentina for the G20 summit and a meeting with President Xi Jinping. Trump's meeting with Xi will come at the end of the summit, their first meeting since the two nations imposed tariffs on each other's imports, which led to tensions between the world's top economies. Trump's another high-profile meeting was scheduled with Russian President Putin, but Trump said via Twitter that he was cancelling the meeting with Putin, citing the current Ukraine crisis. China's foreign ministry spokesman urged the U.S. to prudently and properly handle the Taiwan-related issues. Geng Shuang, the spokesman, made the comments in response to the passage by two U.S. warships. 
to the Taiwan Strait on Wednesday. He said China has closely monitored the passage from start to end and expressed its concerns to the U.S. side. World leaders continue to descend in Buenos Aires for the Group of 20 summit. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived ahead of the summit's Friday start. PM Modi is set to hold talks with Chinese President Xi Jinping and German Chancellor Angela Merkel on the sidelines of the event. The Prime Minister is expected to speak on his flagship programs like Ayushman Bharat, Jan Dhan Yojana and Soil Health Card at the G20 summit. Argentine President Mauricio Macri hosted a meeting with European Council President Donald Tusk and EU Commission President John Claude Juncker ahead of the G20 summit in Buenos Aires. The group of 20 world leaders are set to discuss international trade, the global economy and climate change. The G20 brings together the world's largest economies responsible for 85% of global economic output and two-thirds of the world's population. As world leaders descended on Buenos Aires for the Group of 20 summit, social groups from around Latin America gathered outside Argentina's Congress building for a counter-conference dubbed the People's Summit. Demonstrators made their way to the meeting with signs and banners denouncing the G20 and the International Monetary Fund. The G20 summit brings leaders of the world's 20 top industrialized countries together to discuss issues such as trade and climate change. Deutsche Bank shares were down more than 3% upon closing and have lost almost half of their value this year over money laundering allegations linked to the Panama Papers. Investigators are looking into the activities of two unnamed Deutsche Bank employees alleged to have helped clients set up offshore firms to launder money. Around 170 police officers, prosecutors and tax inspectors searched the offices where written and electronic business documents were seized. Russian President Vladimir Putin said that Russian civil society should catch up with the military success of the country. Speaking at the meeting with members of the All-Russian People's Front organization created to boost the ratings of Putin's ruling United Russia Party, Putin said Russia managed to revive its army and fleet and reliably secure national safety. The audience of supporters applauded and waved flags as Putin praised Russia's success in military industrial sector and talked about the development of civil industries as the next step for the country. North Korea's Foreign Minister Ri Yong Ho arrived in Hanoi on his three-day trip to Vietnam to learn about the country's model of economic reform. Ri is also expected to inspect industrial zones and interview economic experts. After years of self-imposed isolation and sanctions for its development of nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles, North Korea has this year been trying to build its foreign contacts. Business leaders in Spain have highly commented on Chinese President Xi Jinping's state visit to Spain, saying it plays a vital part in enhancing cooperation between the two countries in various aspects. Xi, together with Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez, met with representatives from the China-Spain Advisory Council on Wednesday. Xi extended his congratulations for the establishment of the Business Advisory Council and its first meeting on Tuesday. Spanish State Secretary for Trade said Xi's visit will deepen bilateral cooperation and bring more opportunities. U.S. President Donald Trump's National Security Advisor John Bolton met Brazil's far-right President-elect Jair Bolsonaro to draw closer the two biggest economies in Americas. Bolsonaro was easily elected last month by voters enraged over endemic political corruption and an economy still sputtering after enduring its worst recession in a century. Bolton tweeted after the meeting that he had extended Trump's invitation for the Brazilian leader to visit the U.S. and that the one-hour meeting was wide-ranging and very productive.
the Rio de Janeiro state governor was arrested over allegations of involvement in graft and money laundering group. The arrest deals a blow to Brazil's political elite by the car wash corruption peep probe. The state governor was detained along with eight others as part of the investigation which has led to convictions of scores of high-level polit politicians and people from the business elite. Prosecutors allege that he took part in a criminal organization from 2007 to 2014 when he served as a Secretary of Public Works and Deputy Governor to former Governor Sergio Cabral, who was convicted and jailed over the scheme. A British lawmaker revealed he was HIV positive during an emotional speech to Parliament to mark the upcoming World AIDS Day. Lloyd Russell, 32 years of age, told his fellow lawmakers that he had been diagnosed with positive when he was age 22. He said he had decided to speak out to help others to seek treatment and fight the stigma surrounding the disease. Powerful waves crashed onto the shore along the parts of the Irish and Cornish coast as Storm Diana approached the UK and Ireland. Social media users posted videos of rough seas and strong waves breaching sea defences in coastal areas which are subject to weather warnings. The UK's National Weather Service issued yellow weather warnings of a part of the UK and Ireland bordering the Irish Sea. It forecast winds of up to 7 T miles per hour and heavy rains. Flash floods triggered by heavy rains and left dozens of people stranded in Turkish tourist hub of Bodrum. Main roads of Bodrum remain inundated with people being stranded and cars being partially submerged. Several people were rescued by excavators as residents waded through flooded streets to return home. Dozens of cars were washed away by flood waters and many shops and restaurants were severely damaged even as many homes were also flooded. Municipality of Bodrum said that efforts were underway to rescue stranded passengers and drain flood waters. High winds blew off the roof of a harbour restaurant in Newfoundland, Canada. Video uploaded to social media showed the movement. The roof came off from the Port or Basques restaurant. The man who posted the video said weather has been extra bad this season as they had several storms over the last weeks. Local media reported power outages, closed schools and a winter storm warning in effect for the zone. The UN issued a stark warning about rising sea levels and an impending food crisis as they gave their initial 2018 climate statement days before a summit in Poland. According to the UN report, global temperatures are on course for a 3 to 5 degrees Celsius rise this century, far overshooting global target of limiting this increase to 2 C degrees Celsius or less. A scientist say that it is vital to limit the rise in global temperatures to 2 Celsius to avert more extreme weather, rising sea levels and the loss of flora and fauna. Designed with the intention of highlighting knife crimes in UK, a 27-foot high sculpture made of 100,000 confiscated knives is up on display in the English city of uh, Liverpool. The sculpture that pays tribute to the victims of knife crime has been made at the British Iron Works Centre. The sculpture designer Alfie Bradley said that the sculpture was created as a national monument against violence and aggression. It also displays the message from the victims' families which is engraved on its wings. It took one and a half years for the sculpture to get completed. And now a campaign group from Liverpool is posting it in the city of raise awareness of knife crime.
Around 100 LGBT activists gathered in Bangkok to express concerns over discrimination in a law that recognizes their relationship as life partnership. Activists masked in colorful costumes from uh, one university outside a shopping mall in central Bangkok. Demonstrations also marked the 10th anniversary since Thai authorities officially started recognizing LGBT orientations as diverse genders. Before this, the official position deemed LGBT people mentally ill. Thousands, including students and workers from across the public service sector, marched in Barcelona to demand a reversal of budget cuts and improve working conditions. Around 8,000 people took to the part in the demonstrations in Barcelona. The government of uh, Quim Torra has remained mostly silent during the day's long protest, which intensified on Wednesday when protesters surrounded the Catalan parliament. The pro-independence Torah tweeted that he was meeting with the members of the cabinet to continue working to reach the necessary agreements for the good of citizens.